last time we created this uh, 3D cabinet here. Today we're going to create a lamp to put on it. Let's go ahead and hide the cabinet, hide the plane it's on, and we're going to hit F3 and type in sphere and choose UV sphere. I'm going to click up here to get out of uh, render preview. One to see the front. I'm going to hit shift and move uh, my screen up here. Uh, tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to turn on proportional editing. I'm going to hit Z and choose wire frame. And I'm going to choose to edit vertices. I'm going to choose the bottom vertice here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say scale. And since we have proportional scaling in, I can kind of bring in the whole bottom of this and we're creating a lamp to put on that cabinet. So I'm going to give it kind of a classic lamp shape, although you don't see lamps like this too much anymore. A little bit more like this. Okay, now I'm going to turn off proportional editing. And with that bottom vertices selected, I'm going to hit Control plus a couple of times to about there. Then I hit SZ0 to give it kind of a flat base. Next, I'm going to choose this top vertice up here. And I'm going to hit Delete. I'm going to delete the vertice. And then I am going to go ahead and hit Alt, click, until I have selected there we go, this top ring here. And I'm gonna hit one to go on the number pad to go into front view. And I'm gonna say extrude, whoops, extrude Z to make sure it goes straight up. Extrude, extrude S, scale in, extrude Z to go up. I'm gonna hit extrude scale to bring it in. Extrude Z to bring it up, extrude S to bring it down, extrude Z, and it's kind of, you know, where the light bulb put in. Now you can model the light bulb, but we're not really going to see the light bulb in what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab to get out of edit mode, and we're going to work on the lamp shade. Uh, so I'm going to hit F3. I'm going to type in CY for cylinder. We're going to choose a cylinder mesh. There it is. We can see some of its, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? attributes over here on the left. Uh, we can look at it here. Let's go ahead and go Z and go into solid mode. And let's go ahead and grab Z, move that up. I am going to select that now and I'm going to go into face mode. I'm going to choose this top face and control click, or sorry, not control click. I always do that. Click the top one and shift click the bottom one and hit delete and we're going to delete the face. So now we have a lampshade, it's a little large. So we're going to go into front view and I'm going to tab out of edit mode, scale on the Z until I get about how I look like it looking. I'm going to grab it, pull it down a little bit and then tab into edit mode, choose vertices and Z4, oh, am I going to hover over my 3D view, Z4 for wireframe and then B for box select. We're going to select the top ones here and we're going to scale that in and would you look at that we have a lamp. Um, now, there's a, a few things we can do here. Let's go ahead and look how it's looking in rendered mode. You can see here, first of all, things are a little rough. Let's go ahead and actually connect these two. So with the champ, uh, sh sh <laughs> lamp shade selected, we are going to shift select the body and we're gonna hit, um, is it J? No, it's just F3. And whenever you don't know what you're doing, hit F3 and start typing what you're looking for. Join, object join, they are now joined. There is a shortcut key for that. Now that that's selected, we are going to hit F3 and hit smooth and choose shade smooth. And now it definitely looks a lot smoother, which is nice. Now you could add ridges uh, to this lampshade if you wanted. Sometimes I add a little bit of a uh, lip at the top and the bottom. But for right now, let's go ahead and leave it like this but let's give it a material. We're going to choose a material here. We're going to add a material and let's go ahead and go into edit mode. I'm going to select the vertice down here and I'm going to just control plus to select the entire base until the entire base is selected. There is a, a key to select all connecting. I can't remember what it is now, but control plus till they're all selected. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a color. What color should this lamp be? Maybe just like a, a light blue but we're definitely going to make it metallic. We're going to turn the roughness down. 
so that that lamp is very reflective. But we don't want the shade to be reflective. So go ahead and select uh, one of the vertices up here. Again, Control Plus. Again, there's a key to automatically select all connected. I don't remember what it is. Just Control Plus, they're all selected for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to say Plus here to create a new material. We're going to, or to add a new material slot. Then we're going to create a new material. And we'll leave that as white. And we will assign that to our shade here. Now we have that. We can hit here and see how it's looking rendered out. It's looking pretty nice. Uh, I think I might want to change uh, the color of the lamp a little bit though. Maybe make it a, like a darker blue. That's looking nice. Now let's go ahead and bring back our plane. Make that visible. Let's go ahead and bring back our cabinet. There it is. Uh, as you can see, our lamp is rather large. Let's go ahead and first grab it, Z, move it up to about there, and we will scale it until it's about the size that we want. We'll grab it and move it up. Let's move into front view so we can see right where it is. Put it right there. It's still a little large, I think. We'll scale it down a little bit more, and we will grab it and move it right there. Let's move our camera up so that it will be in our render. Uh, we will G to grab the camera and then click your mouse wheel and you can scroll, or not scroll, but move your mouse back and forth to move it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and grab our plane, grab it on the Y, move it this way, grab it on the X and move it that way. And you can see it's starting to render out. It is nicely um, reflective there. Let's go ahead and hit F12 and start rendering it out. Again, I will uh, put a link in the description. I will hopefully remember to save and upload this file. You could definitely give the lamp more detail. Now, something else you might want to look into doing, right now the lamp, lamp is not emitting any light. Uh, so what we could do is, uh, if we go back here, I can grab one of these lamps or one of, the, one of the lamp lamps, not the lamp we created, but the light. I can shift D and I can move that over and go to top view. And let's get into wireframe mode real quick. And I can grab and I can put this lamp, this light, this lighting source, not the lamp we created, but this lamp that's lighting. So I can put that inside here. And if we go into render view now, it looks more like the lamp is emitting light, and of course we can adjust its brightness. Uh, but you can see it's casting down because there's actually a light inside there casting down, so we get this nice ring around the lamp. But uh, the lamp itself isn't really glowing. So something else we could do instead is if we're using a renderer like Cycles, we can choose uh, this and we can go to our material for the shade right here. And you can turn up its emission strength. So I can, let's make the emission white. And now the emission strength is set to one and you can turn that up some and it will actually start glowing now. And if I turn off our other lamps, I think if I hide them, they'll be turned off. We can see that it's glowing and it's casting a light down. And that's a little more realistic if your lighting sources in your scene are actually uh, emitting light. So it all depends on what you're looking for. Uh, for this particular scene, I'm going to leave our other light sources on. But uh, lighting is a thing that can take a while adjusting to get right just how you want them. Uh, you, like maybe you want it a little more like this. And uh, the, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I am going to render this out now again. We could spend a lot more time with the lighting. But I think our very uh, simple rather low poly models here that we created rather quickly. Again, this lamp, even with all my talking, took less than 10 minutes to make. So the two models together took less than 20 minutes. And in reality, if I was just doing them, probably would have taken me less than 10 minutes to create them. And again, you can put more detail, especially into that lamp shade. Sometimes I, I put edges on them, but we have this scene rendering out and I will upload this uh, Blender project online and I'll put a link in the description of this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And uh, I hope that you have a great day. And again, this will smooth out more as the scene renders out. Actually, let me go ahead and just for this video, just so you can have something at the end of the video here, I'm going to turn my render size down to half. It's going to render quite a bit quicker now. 
Cycles, again, if I think I mentioned in the last video, is great if you're going for photorealism, which we're not really going for photorealism here. These are very basic models, but they're, they're fairly well with a lot, with good lighting. This might start to look photorealistic, um, but it's also very, very slow. You can use your GPU if you have a GPU supported. I'm running on my laptop here, and as far as I know, it, it, I have to use the uh, CPU for rendering, which could slow things down a little bit. I don't use Cycle Renderer, renderer very much because most of what I create are for video games uh, or videos, and I'm not going for photorealism. Uh, but I'm trying to play around with Cycles a little bit more so I can do videos for you guys on them. Uh, but uh, it's probably going to take, uh, I would guess, probably about four or five minutes for it to render out this one shot. So if you're making a video and you're going 30 or 24 to 30 frames a second, that's a very long time for rendering stuff out, and that's why I don't use personally cycles. Cycles is great, but it's not great for my uses. Um, but I thought I'd use it in this video. It, it does make some nice reflections as it renders out more. And it goes more samples right now. The default is over four thousand. It might want to turn that down, but we have these little fireflies that might go away uh, as it renders out. Uh, there's also ways to eliminate them uh, with a lower sample rate. Uh, and you can see it's going rather slow right now, but uh, as the samples go on, it's going to go faster and faster, and uh, you'll have a nice image at the end. And if you're definitely, if you're going for photorealism and you're just rendering out a still image, Cycles is probably the way to go, but the renderer you use depends on your project. Um, but I just wanted to show you some very basic very simple ways you can create a lot of objects just using uh, extruding in setting, resizing, and rotating, uh, you know. So, yeah, I've talked a lot. I'm just talking to let this render out a bit, but you get the idea. Hopefully this will look good uh, when it's all done rendering, and I hope you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description as well as a link to this uh, Blender file. I hope that you have a great day.